Let us read together our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I don't normally put a title on a sermon, but if I was to do that today, the title would simply be this. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? A naked man, he lives in a graveyard, 2,000 demons at least, because that's how many pigs there were. Oh my gosh, what kind of story is this? It's a crazy gospel lesson today. And it's that way because this is the first time (coughs) that Jesus goes across the Sea of Galilee into Gentile territory. All it said in the text was it's opposite Galilee. It's opposite Galilee in a lot of ways, and I'm sure it was quite an adventure that day. There's a professor at Duke University who is also a Methodist pastor, and he was invited to preach at a big Episcopalian worship service in Alexandria, Virginia. About three months before the event, 
he received a phone call from the person putting the bulletin together, and they said, I need your title. Well, this guy never puts titles on sermons. In fact, it's three months out. He hasn't even looked at it yet. So he's going, oh my gosh, really? A title? I need to come up with one now. And he knew it was a miracle story lesson, so he knew the miracle somehow was going to point at the power of Jesus. So he said, the title is His Divine Majesty. What this man forgot was that Episcopalians love having different titles for their clergy. Some are the reverend, some are the very reverend, some are the most reverend, some is the right reverend. Yes, he got it wrong. And when he showed up to preach, when he opened the bulletin, there across from the sermon, the name of the preacher was given. His divine majesty, the reverend so-and-so. They wanted his title, not the title of a sermon. In other words, they were asking, what are you called? What is your name? What is the title that goes before your name? In our gospel lesson today, that's the big question. What is your name? And Jesus asked it of the man who is possessed with demons. Now we need to stop for a second talk a little bit about demons in the time of Jesus. A lot of things were labeled demons, things that were not understood, things that happened in life that almost turned our bodies or even ourselves against ourselves that couldn't be explained were often labeled as demons, okay? So, for example... um, if you, if you want to know about my latest demon, my latest demon was called COVID. Now, Pastor Mark is not preaching that COVID is a demon, right? Pastor Mark is saying, if you lived in a time of Jesus and COVID hit your village, you would have said, that's a demon. Not explaining what this force is that's entering into people and affecting their bodies in different ways. So lots of things got labeled demons that we would label otherwise today such as bipolar disorder, such as cancer, lupus. We could go on with a list of things that plague us. And the worst part is when something plagues us and we don't know what it is. And so as Jesus models, we ask the first question, what is your name? We need to know, what is it that we're battling with? in our life. So each of us could probably name something that would have been labeled a demon back then, some kind of force that seems to be working against us that perhaps we're wrestling with at this time. And if you have one in mind, hold on to it and and carry it into the story with you. But there's two others, and there's two old jokes that kind of illustrate this. There's two other kinds of demons as well. There's an old story, an old joke that says they brought a woman to Jesus who had seven demons. And Jesus said, I'm going to cast these seven demons out. And the woman smiled a mischievous little smile and said, can you cast out six? (laughs) Yes. Some demons we really don't want to lose. We want to hang on to. Worse than that is the old joke of the guy who goes to the psychiatrist and says, Doc, My brother thinks he's a chicken. The doctor said, bring him in for three visits. I can cure him. Nah, no thanks. We need the eggs. (laughs) Even worse is when others want to see you in the thralls of one of these life demons because somehow they're getting something out of it. Whatever demon story you can grab onto today, carry it into this story. When Jesus asked the question, what is your name? And the answer is, legion. Wow. This is a tough one. Jesus is wrestling with something very difficult and powerful here. And when he asks the name to get a handle on this thing, he finds out the name is legion. Army. A Roman legion in the time of Jesus was about 6,000 soldiers. Jesus is up against something 
that is so powerful, so harmful, but once he has its name, he's got it. Legion begs, don't throw me into the abyss. Don't make me disappear forever. Send me somewhere. Send me to that herd of pigs. And so Jesus does. And the irony is, even the pigs have enough sense to know it needs to be carried into the abyss as they all go charging off the cliff. The city, the city residents see this happen and are absolutely amazed. But did you notice something in this story? The man who was demon-possessed knew Jesus' name, and he knew Jesus' title. Jesus, son of the most high God, he calls him. He recognizes the healing presence that stands before him. Well, after the grand miracle's been done, the folks, the locals come and they find that it is true that the 2,000 swine are gone and here this man who's just been the strangest person they've ever known is clothed in his right mind and sitting at the feet of Jesus. They have witnessed the most unbelievable transformation and their response is simple. You need to leave our community. You need to go. And then Jesus models what he's been teaching the disciples. When your peace is rejected, you wipe the dust off your feet and you leave. As he leaves, he leaves our new friend, the man who has now been cured. And you know what? We don't know what his name is. We don't know if Jesus gave him a nickname, a new name. We don't know if he returned to an old name before he was legion. We don't know. We don't know his name, but we know his title. We know his title from the story. The one who was a pariah is now a prophet. But more than that, he's more than a prophet. He is an apostle. Because Jesus tells him, you can't go with me. You're going to be an apostle. You're going to stay here, and you're going to go tell others in the city about me. That's what Jesus would do with the 12. He'd send them out ahead to prepare places that he was going to come visit. And you see, Jesus leaves, but later in the gospel, he'll make a second trip back to this area. And when he shows up, the welcome is tremendous. Because I think the apostle he left behind did a really good job. The sisters and brothers... When we look closely at this story, the question we ask is the question of naming. This morning at 9 o'clock, we had a baptism of Lila Kate. And at that baptism, we asked, by what name shall this child be known? And Mandy and Kemper said, Lila Kate Gibson. For she has a last name. She has a household into which she's been born. But throughout the rest of the service, we dropped that and just called her Lila Kate. Because with that, the surname for today is Christian. And she also received a title today, the same title that you and I have, Child of God. Never forget that God knows you by name. And never forget that you or a baptized child of God. And whatever you face tomorrow, if you can name it, or if it is so unknown and strange, you've never seen it, nor can name it before, and you're struggling for that, know this, that the one who could cast out a whole legion of forces that were out to do harm to one of God's children Jesus is more powerful than that. Jesus walks with us and blesses us, knows us by name, and claims us as one of the family. Thanks be to God. Amen.